segregation, you see, from Birmingham, after, after, we, after, we, after we got into Birmingham and really defeated Bull O'Connor and the segregationists in the sense of you never, you never get the dregs of it out, but you just overcome it by over, literally overfilling the jails, etc. cetera. Uh, then everybody, everywhere you go, everybody was against segregation, which made it better. And, you know, it might surprise you to know that uh, when we started out, we just thought ride on the bus would be a nice thing for white people to give, but it showed that segregation was so entrenched, so important to the white community that they wouldn't even allow that. And I think that brought about understanding that, that they weren't going to give anything, weren't going to give back anything. So you had to fight for all of it. Well, we still haven't got it all, but we've got much further on the way. We're standing in front of the Oak Hill Cemetery, the oldest cemetery in Birmingham. Uh, it was established in 1871, actually the same year that the city uh, was incorporated. Uh, this cemetery is where Fred Shuttlesworth was, was buried just a few couple weeks ago. Uh, Reverend Shuttlesworth was the leader of the movement in Birmingham. He came in 1953, he took over the pastor at Bethel Baptist Church in North Birmingham, uh, Collegeville and he was very actively involved with the NAACP. When the NAACP was outlawed from operating in the state of Alabama, Reverend Shuttlesworth, with several other individuals, established the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights. And that filled the void that would have been there where the movement is concerned if the NAACP had simply went dormant without any other activity. But as a result of Fred Shuttlesworth and his organization, they prepared Birmingham for what would happen in 1963. Resulting from Reverend Shuttlesworth being so active, on Christmas night, 1956, his home was bombed. His family was in the home, and just miraculously, no one was injured. That night, the police came and told him that they knew that the Klan had done this, and they were attempting to kill Shuttlesworth. They told uh, Reverend Fred, Fred Shuttlesworth that. Reverend Fred then told them to go back and tell your clan brethren that Shuttlesworth is not going anyplace. I'm here for the duration. He was fearless. He took, he took no prisoners. He was obviously one, the person for the times, because Bull Connor was the epitome of racism and segregation. He, in fact, from the black perspective, was the leader of the terror tactics that were happening in the black community. He was the police commissioner, and we equated the police with the Klan. They were basically synonymous as far as we were concerned. Reverend Shuttlesworth said that what he, as leader, he had to show black people that we did not have to be afraid of the police and of Bull Connor. So he would do certain things that was, um, some people would say was just crazy. He called Bull Connor once. I interviewed him at the Civil Rights Institute, and he told me this story. He called Bull Connor one night, one Sunday evening, and said, Bull, if you want to be a part of history, meet me at 19th Street, 3rd Avenue, tomorrow morning at 9.30, and I'll make you a part of history. I asked him, well, why would you do that? Why would you tell him? What? He said, well, I had to show people that I was not afraid of Bull Connor because we were basically afraid and terrorized by them. Fred Shuttlesworth said he tried to give his life for the movement, and they tried to take it, but they couldn't. He took his children to desegregate Phillips High School in September 1957. They were attacked. His wife was stabbed in the hip. He eventually made it back to the car, and they took him, they nearly beat him to death. They were attempting to kill him that day. When they got him to the hospital, he was examined and he said that his blood pressure was normal. So you know, a man of that stripe had to be someone that is very, very special. You know, Fred was not afraid. He said that he would, he would never tell, ask anyone to do anything that he wouldn't do. He was arrested more than any other person, probably in the movement. 
He met Dr. King in Montgomery when Dr. King first came to Dexter uh, Avenue Baptist Church. They were associated during the Montgomery uh, bus boycott and they were intimately involved. And as a result, the two of them with other ministers in 1957 established the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Yes, Fred Shuttlesworth was a part of that cadre of, of, of preachers at the time that did that. That then, result, of course, resulted in a very close relationship between SCLC and the Alabama Christian Movement. And Reverend Shuttlesworth invited SCLC to come to Birmingham after 1962 when they were in Albany, Georgia. And some people say that the movement actually uh, lost there. They did not have a victory there. So Fred asked them, so you come to Birmingham and we will win because as Birmingham goes, so goes the rest of the South. And we knew that Bull Connor was here and he would do us a favor and he did. You know, he put water hoses and dogs on children. This image was projected all over the world and it put Birmingham in the spotlight. And that would of course result in eventually the passing of the 1964 Civil Rights Bill as well as the 1965 Civil Rights Bill. So we're talking about a man here of courage, who was fearless, and who was basically, he said that he was destined to be in Birmingham at the time because a hard city like Birmingham needed someone with a hard head and he brought the hard head. Fred Shuttlesworth, the man of his times.